Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Today we have got West Germany's main battle tank, the uh, Leopard 2A7, a real mighty mean piece of armour. Um, say West Germany, it's Germany isn't it now? Um, old habits die hard. We have here it's a Meng kit. Um, now Meng, hmm, I've had a bit of a checkered relationship with Meng, I've had some problems with them as some of you probably know, or specifically with their Fokker DR1 tripod, which we'll, we'll not dwell on, Best, less said about it the better really, but their tank kits and also um, I did their uh, Messerschmitt ME163B Comet, which was an absolute peach of a kit, really nice kit that, and their tank kits are really good I've got to say. So. I think we're going to be okay with this one. Let's have a look at what we got then. So, it's the uh, Tyrannosaurus series TS027, main battle tank, the Leopard 2 A7, accurate replica of the A7, clear bright lights and optical equipment, cement free workable tracks. They always say that, don't they? Do they work though? Adhesive mirror foil, movable suspension, and precision PE parts. On the side, we have got. A little bit of a, a write-up, let's have a little nosy of this, shall we? It says the Leopard 2A7, the most advanced German main battle tank, has been handed over to Germany since the end of 2014. This vehicle has received a new APU and new air conditioning system. There are, there's no big improvement on its protection, but it's prepared for the installation of add-on armour on its hull. When necessary, the installation of add-on armour can be done in a very fast manner. It's still fitted with a 120mm L55 smooth bore gun. So that's a bit of the Rhine metal gun, isn't it? The Leopard A7 will become the main equipment of Germany, uh, Germany's armour in the future. Okay, let's have a look then, see what we have in this one. I do like the Leopard, I think it's a real wicked looking thing. It reminds me of a. It reminds me of the King Tiger, but a stealthy version. <laughs> let's see what we've got. Um, I am not the owner of this one, by the way. Just looking at what it says in there. I thought it said rifle, it doesn't, it says something else. I'm not the owner of this particular model, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, however, the good, that's the bad news, the good news is the person who is the owner insists that I open the bags for you, so you're going to be okay. Oh, sorry, I'm just a bit taken aback. It's, it's in a white plastic. I'm not used to that on tanks. Armour usually comes very dark green isn't it? Or a dark grey, it's very white, how unusual. Oh, there's a lot of parts. Lots of bags, stapled bags. Now then, staple bag. Very tempted to uh, unstaple it. I think I might end up doing that because it'll take too long, so perhaps not. Where do we begin? I think we'll start with the instructions. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff here. Oh, yes, it's a many, many parts. So, we have a colour call out guide, which is rather uh, lightweight. This isn't it, it's not that usually, usually goes a bit more effort than that, don't they? Um, it's very thin, looks like a tissue paper. Uh, anyway, you've got um, a clear uh, idea of what it should look like here with your colour call outs. Um, don't know which uh, paints they're actually quoting there. Uh, looks like it's the uh, Meng's own, which is AK. Okay. Gives you a quick guide, a bit of an idea. Then we have got on the other side a bit of a detail, one or two decals that they're advising you to put on. Um, around the things like the number plate, etc. Uh, based at Bundweiser, Bund Bundeswehr, sorry, at Munster. Um, or 2015, both 2015 actually. Okay, fair enough, we'll put that one away. Now, let's have a look at the destructions. So we've already got the, uh, yeah, we've already had the history, so let's get straight into it now then. Uh, Ming's uh, instructions are usually fairly good, in fairness. Uh, we've got a nice diagram here, with a little bit of explanation about what some of these things are. Overpressure vent cover for the electronic compartment, gunfire simulator, Gunfire simulator. Okay. 
interesting. I swear, I suppose that's when they're on training. External display of the battle command control system. External display. Oh, this is when the commander is riding on top of the tank, I guess, out of the cupola. Auxiliary power unit on the side, rear view camera, mm, quite advanced isn't it? Crew compartment cooling system. Okay, right then, let's get into it. We have got building up your um, sprocket and drive wheels. Um, you've also got your main road wheels here, which is coming in one piece with the look of it. There's a poly cap there. Then you've got these little shock absorbers to attach. Note the glowing position. And you've got to make a hole. It's like the torsion bar system, isn't it? Okay. Then you're building up the front of the tank. Um, oh sorry, it's the rear, rear armour assembly. Um, it's like an armoured panel at the back. A couple of holes to drill, one millimetre holes. Then you've got these torsion bars you've got to attach all the way down and go through, of course. One side to the other. Then you bring on your road wheels and your bottom hull. Um, well, it's actually, sorry, it's the hull armour, I should say. External armour. Idler wheels and your drive sprockets are going on there as well. And then you've got uh, protection stiffness. This is under the rear, I think. Yeah, the rear of the tank. And uh, it's just to stop any damage when it grounds out, I think. And then we've got some small parts that need painting at the back. Track assembly now then. <laughs> Menga notorious. And I, have, I should warn you, we've got a bag of tracks here, which will go on and on and on and on. They take a lot of time. But they do at least come up with this clever jig assembly system. And on it we have got um, the track goes in and then you sort of put the the roller pins in like a separate assembly like and then the other track top goes on top of it so it works like a sandwich really um, they, they do say they work quite well I'm not actually got experience of them myself these but I'm told they're okay uh, and it, it is quicker than doing individual pins of course and then it shows you how they all inter, interleave and uh, click in hopefully then we've got our rear cooling fan covers and the top uh, engine deck uh, sort of armour stroke uh, engine cover. A little bit of uh, towing eyes etc going on the front. Then you've got your, your mirrors here and you've got lights, spare tracks, driver's hatch complete with periscopes. And then we have got some hand rails and the mirrors going on some uh, more engine hatches sorry the driver's hatch going in there sorry and then the headlights going on then you're building up your various hull parts so you've got air intake cover you've got your towing cables as well and then you've got various parts like the air filter covers um, with the mesh going on the back covering up the air filters and the extraction and the cooling system intakes. That paper's thicker than the, uh, the colour guard is. Uh, then you've got the side skirts going on and these have got like an armour system built into them so they're like a, a laminate almost like a sandwich effect and the idea is to detonate any RPGs or light ar armour shells that are going to come in at the tank and they will detonate on the outer not the inner face so it's like um, a clever sandwich system to create protection for the inner side of the armour and the hull then we've got the gun I'm not sure I don't think it's a metal one in this particular kit I think it's a plastic gun we'll come to that in a second uh, we've got the gun and the muzzle going on it's got a flash eliminator at the front and then you're building in your uh, your main gun assembly where it goes is the breech then you're going to do your turret assembly internally with your periscopes and this very low lying sort of stealthy turret going on the top your gun assembly and then you've got various add-on armour pieces there's several of these around the tank actually 
you've got turret add-on armour, you've got side turret armour and all these parts are going on here to try and absorb any potential shell incoming. It's quite impressive I've got to say actually all these separate add-on armour sections it's yeah it's got a lot of additional protection Now then, all the small parts, we've got machine guns, we've got commander's display, the external display when he's out of the turret at the top, we've got the periscope and the panoramic sight, periscope stroke panoramic sight for the commander, smoke grenade launchers and discharges, gunfire simulator set, very interesting setup isn't it, commander's hatch, gunner's EMES sighting system for using the gun battle loader's hatch and you bring in all these little parts and um, these sort of assemblies are going to be put on there at that point. Um, then you're putting your machine gun in here that you just assembled you're bringing all these parts together basically onto the turret, putting on your hatches, putting on your aerials etc. Tow handles, grab handles and then you've got all your external stowage boxes going on here and there are many, uh, especially at the back. Uh, air conditioning system going on, main storage box, storage baskets, this is often for the things like the spent shells, etc. And then you've got barrel cleaning rod bracket. <laughs> um, so the cleaning rod obviously comes in several parts. I guess it's telescopic, this screwing together. And you've got your antenna storage box. So many storage boxes on this tank, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Look at that. They're everywhere. Then you've got attaching your gunfire simulator. It goes on the front of the turret. You've got some piping that goes to it, like a high pressure hose, I think. And then you attach your turret here. And then that's it. Um, then it's just your sprue trees and your part and guy. Right, excellent. Looks good. Looks very nice. Say. Now then, let's have a look. See if it will live up to expectation. We we recently saw this um, AFE club, the Shot Cow IDF Centurion, which was really nice. So look what we've got here. Now then, first of all, my blade is getting blunt. I'm sure it is. It's not cutting. There we go, we've got some nice photo etch, it's got a nice protective um, sheet on it, which is a good idea, stop any scratchy. Look at this. Mm. Check it out, that's impressive isn't it? Very, very nice, so you've got a lot of heat shielding, and this will be around the exhaust area for sure. In addition, there's a second sheet of photo etch. They give you quite a lot to ming, actually. And then here we've got, whoops, here we've got um, various little uh, sort of brackets and things, I think, basically. And again, there's another, like a ventilated cover, looks like it might be a, like an exhaust type piece here, like a ventilation grate grill. Um, the decals, which look very few and far between, <laughs> not many of them, just a couple of German crosses and a few warning signs and a couple of number plates basically. Um, and then you've also got some, some feels like, I mean, it's, obviously it's clearly it's the tow cable, but it, this, this is a nice one. Perhaps, I don't know, perhaps a bit better than we saw on the AFV club, it's, it feels like a plasticised metal twine that one. Uh, kind of looks a bit more realistic I think. And then we have some nice mirror. This is good as well. It's self-adhesive metallized uh, for the mirrors and it's got a piece of sheet of plastic over it to protect it so it doesn't get scratched which is a good idea. So they thought that one through very very well. Now then let us Let us pop those back in there, bring you out again because you can't see a thing. Let's see what exactly is going on. So 
Sorry about that. <laughs> Back into my old bad habits there, wasn't I? Now I noticed that we've got all these bags that are basically with staples. I'm just wondering if I can get the staples out rather than cut them, but it'd probably be, it'd be easier and quicker just to cut them, I think. Uh, I think it would just take too long otherwise, won't it? And why don't we cut the staples off? Wouldn't that make sense? Let's just go the old fashioned way. Whoops. Again, then don't give you a huge bag. So, starting off with this is a twin, okay, this is a twin uh, sprue in the bag. So, oh yes, now Meng, I say Meng's tanks are usually good and it looks like another one, frankly. Let's have a look. So we've got these um, rotary sort of fan covers for the engine, on top of the engine. Then you've got all your torsion bars, many of them. There are, really are a lot of those, I've got to say. You've got your dry sprockets. Which looks very nice. Various, uh, it's like a return, return idler wheels here, tensioning wheels. Um, is that a shell? Is that a shell? Really? Not sure. And then you've got all these parts for the various assemblies for these uh, tensioning system for the torsion bars. One or two bits of uh, examples of tools. We've got another little fan here. Look at that. Nice. It's good. Very nice indeed. There's two of those. Two identical sprues there. So that's times two. Wow, got a bit of trouble there. Sorry, 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 sorry. Get into bad habits again. Here we go. This is the tracks. Now I'm just going to take one out because there are many, 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 many. How many are there? One, two, three, four sprues. Four sprues of track. Well, let's have a closer look at this uh, this Lincoln pin system that they have. It's quite clever where they have this. Uh, these are like a, a, a pin set, but they're connected at the end, so you sort of insert them, and then you have the sandwich where you have. Um, the actual track pad itself on one side and then you have this other piece on the other side and those that's that's say that's the top that's the bottom that goes on the road and this goes in the middle so you have this sandwich effect and um, yeah you have a, a jig here in which you will put those uh, and that enables you to actually make them up and assemble them all uh, yeah I think it looks okay it's a little bit it's a little bit out of shape, this uh, sprue. Can you see that? Slight distortion to it. You see it? It's a bit, a bit twisted. But um, yeah, it's, the only downside is it's time consuming, but I think it'll give you a good result actually. Uh, I am told that they work okay, so that should be fine. To be fair, then we've got a, a set of clear, the uh, various lights and things. That's how nosy of these. What have we got here? Oh yes, those are quite nice, aren't they? Yes, they're nice. All the little periscopes, of course, many, many periscopes. So they have, you know, many, many views out of the tank at various angles all round, front, side and rear. Yeah, it's nice. Nothing wrong with that. Very, very attractive. 
Okay. Then, let's get into the big stuff. Look at this. Let me draw back for this. Look at this. Here we have the hull. Put the Hulk. Ah, the leopard is a big old beast, I'll tell you. Here we have it. Ooh, they've done this nicely. Look at this. Look at the detail here. Yeah, we like that. Look at that. And then we've got the top, separate top piece, but obviously it goes on there, no problem. He says. Got it right there. That's the way it goes. Got it. See. Look at the detail here. Yes. It's got that sort of anti-skid uh, sort of surface on it. Uh, here and there, they've got these areas where it's deliberately like a rubberized, grippy surface for the soldiers to climb on and off. Lots of it at the front here. You can see it here. A bit like on the other leopard, leopard version that I reviewed last year. It's nicely done that, and uh, sensibly put this support piece of sprue across the back so that you end up with a very um, non-flexing piece. Yeah, I like that. It's a really nice. And then inside we've just got all the uh, potty caps, which we won't get too excited about, obviously. That's for all the road wheels to fix onto. That's nice. Excellent. Now then, wheels. Uh, oh, no, hang on, let's go, let's go to the turret. Let's do the turret because that's quite sexy. Isn't it? Let's have a look at that. There we are. It's tricky to get in and out of these bags from me. Do them so tightly. Oh, now look at the anti slip on this. Look at the finish here. That is lovely. Yeah, there's no doubt that men are good at this. You can understand why I got so frustrated when you look at this, how good it is. Why I was so frustrated with the, the triplane, because it was clearly, you're not telling me, not in a million years, was this moulding manufactured by the same people that made that triplane. No chance. No. Zero possibility. Uh, that's beautiful. And that was just a warped, nasty horrid bit of injection moulding. That is art. That's beautiful. Look at it. Just look at the detail here. Look at that. All the little rivets. You've got all this anti-skid, anti-slip area. That's absolutely fantastic. Mm. Yeah, that's a really nice piece. Very nicely moulded indeed. Can't fault that. Now then, wheels, as I said before, wheels, wheels, wheels. Let's have a look at these. <coughs> Two sets of these. And yes, again. Some really nice moulding. Fantastic, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Rivets, they got all the bolt heads on them. There's no flash. Nothing to be alarmed about at all there. So what does that leave us with? We have got a couple of big sprues here. A couple, there's five in fact. Let's go to this one that's the top of the, uh, the chassis, top of the hole. Look at that. Now then, this has got your Rhine Metal 155mm here, complete with its uh, flash, flash eliminator muzzle. That's quite impressive. Look at that. That's very, very nice. You've got um, all the texture in, you know, it's like a canvas flash area there. And yeah, some very, very fine detail parts all the way along. You've got your top of your 
uh, main hull here. That's the top rear, in fact. And then, then look at this. This is this um, gunfire. Um, what do they call it? Gunfire. Not not gunfire eliminator. The gunfire. Um, I've lost for words, it's gone. The, the, the thing that makes it look like it's firing when it's not, it, this is the actual hydraulic hose which powers it look. The artificial gunfire uh, effect, if you will. And then on the other side you've got um, all sorts of brackets and fine parts here. Um, you've got what looks like the ex part of the exhaust system there. Some very, very fine pieces. Lots of little handrails, grab rails. All sorts of fine parts. That's excellent. Nice, very nice. So, got a couple more of the big ones to have a look at. Let's see what we have here. So, a really big sprue here. You've got the rear cooling area. Um, you've got the vents on the top where the fans go, the cooling fans. And you have also got these um, hatch covers here. I say hatch covers, I think those are not so much the actual hatch into the tank. I think that's the, the hatch covers on top of the engine deck, I think it is. And then here you've got various um, pieces of this side armour. And then the, you get into all this fine work where there is brackets and handrails, towing eyes, grab hooks. You've got parts of the, what looks like a jack system here. Some really fine pieces here. Really, really good. And it's seriously seriously nice you know you've got all these covers and uh, other parts um, very nicely done nice through again bits of mud guards and all sorts okay now then another one here let's have a look Oops. Oh, can't get in again. I'm struggling to get in. Doesn't have to let me in. It's, I am going to have to get a new blade because it's definitely not sharp enough. I've got real issues with this blade. Then. Gosh. Sorry about this, folks. Sorry to the owner. I'm going to shred at the end of his bag slightly. Anyway, here we are. Now then, let's get into the really serious stuff now. The machine guns. Look at this. Wow. Is that an MG34? It's a variant of it, isn't it? It's just a modern day version of the MG34. Just shows you how good that gun was, that they've carried on using it after all this time. Um, you've got what looks like the uh, satchels, the satchel bags, saddle bags at the side. And then we've got a cover plate here, which goes, I think, on top of the uh, part of the uh, engine deck. And then you've got this... Um, this is the, the gunfire simulator, simulator, that was the word I was looking for, gunfire simulator system. And you've got towing eyes, and yeah, you've got lots of fine little pieces here, look at that. There's a huge amount of parts. Lots of fine pieces, this is going to take quite some time to build I think this tank. It's many, many parts in the kit. You've got various hatch covers. These are hatch covers here, for sure. And then you've got your uh, smoke discharges down here. And there's a couple of tools and towing, uh, I think there's a towing rod there as well. That's nice, isn't it? Very, very nice. Okay, two more to go. Two more left. Right, now then, I've got to say, I'm, I'm, I think Ming's tanks are really good. They're one of the top manufacturers, aren't they, for these? And here we've got some of the parts of the top of the engine deck, which we uh, 
haven't seen so far. We've got a uh, part with a couple of access hatches in it here. Then we've got the uh, side armour, um, I think that's the external part of the side armour here. And then we have got, this is the under chassis protection at the back, which stops it, protects it like armour plated pieces to protect it from grounding out where the gearbox is. And then you've got various sort of, uh, I think it's a barrel cleaning rod kit, etc. Again, beautifully moulding. That, that, this central piece here, this is the under chassis protection armour plating. Look at that. Gorgeous. Yep, that's all very nice indeed. It's a cracky little kit. There's a lot of parts though, aren't there? There are a huge number of parts. This is going to take you some time, I think. Some time. And then just one sprue left, in fact. So, just come back to this one. Bloody blade again. <laughs> my French. Oh, it's been really troublesome today. I'm going to definitely change that blade. It's clearly gotten blunt. You can't cut a piece of plastic back. It's not much use for modelling with, is it? Oh, there we go. Got there in the end. And this is all the uh, the armour plating sections and the storage boxes. So you can see here that we've got a little bit of uh, um, surrounding one of the, the access hatches. And then you've got various sections of the plating and the uh, storage bins as well. Quite a lot of storage bin work here. That's nicely done, isn't it? Look at the bolts and the detail on this. Mm, very, very nice. Towing eyes. Yes. All very, very nice. Mmm. Well. Yeah, it's got some uh, it's got some amazing detail this kit and it's got some great finish to it, I think. It's an absolute corker, isn't it? I'm trying to think of anything I've seen that I didn't like, actually. Um don't think there is anything. Uh, I think that uh, the, the only criticism isn't the kit really itself. I think that one or two of those parts uh, sorry, the um, the colour call out was a bit was a bit poorly done. And yeah, the instructions, not bad, but not the greatest. So I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10, which I seem to have done twice recently with our which sounds like a cop-out, but it's not. It's a cracking kit. They're very, very detailed and they're very nicely finished. Um, there's a lot of parts, so it's not going to be a quick, it's going to be a weekend build, that one, is it? That's for sure. That would take me months, probably. The way it rates out, I'm quite a slow builder. I like to take my time and really get everything right. Or as best I can, anyway. Um, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a fast build, especially with those uh, those tracks. <laughs> anyway, nine and a half out of ten. I loved it. Very nice kit. Another great armor kit. Um, men seem to do really good kits these days, um, apart from who, you know who. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you'll give me a nine and a half or ten out of ten with a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Um, please, uh, if you haven't already uh, subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And if you have already ding the notification bell because that way you'll get early warning of upcoming new reviews in the not too distant future and until then i just say thank you very much for joining me hope you enjoyed the review thought it was interesting till next time thanks a lot look after yourself stay safe and bye for now